Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're going to create particle trails in X particles. Firstly, I just want to say a big thanks to everyone who subscribed so far. We broke a thousand at the end of last month, and that is amazing and very encouraging. Thank you. Secondly, I want to apologize for not making a tutorial for the last two weeks. I've been pretty busy with the new website, which I've launched this week. You can find it at cgshortcuts.com and it looks just like this. Probably a bit too much in my face, but there you go. I'll be uploading new content every week and hopefully it'll make finding tutorials a little bit easier. Okay, enough chit chat, let's get into today's tutorial. I'm still in web design mode, so we're going to keep it pretty simple today. We've had a few requests for X particles tutorials, so here we go. Let's make some trails. Let's start by bringing in an X particle system. And if we hit play, you'll see nothing happens to begin with. That's because we need to add an emitter first. So let's come up here and click create emitter. And if we hit play, you can see that's emitting nicely now. For this example, we want our particles to be flowing upwards. So let's change the emitter plane to positive Y. And that's looking good. Let's just grab those handles and stretch it out a little bit on the Z axis. That should do nicely. Okay, we've got our particles. We just need to get those particle trails going. Let's pause this and come up here to generators. And we want to click the choose generator and come down to trails. Again, if we press play, you'll notice nothing changes. And that's because we need to tell it which emitter to use. So let's grab our XP emitter and drag it into the emitter slot. And now we got some trails. It's all a little bit uniform at the moment, so let's make these trails look a bit more organic. We'll scooch up here again and click on our modifiers. And if you come down to motion modifiers, we want to click on turbulence. It's pretty much as easy as that. X particles make setting this sort of stuff up so much quicker. Now we can come in here and fine tune this. Let's bring the particles down to 200 and we'll slow that speed down to 100. Play that back and that's looking nice. Before we get ahead of ourselves here, let's have another quick look at our reference render. So we're going for that optical fiber kind of look. So what we want to do is add little spheres to the end of all our trails. The good news is that is super easy to do in X particles. So let's come up here and bring in a standard sphere. Then if we grab our generators and select generator under generators, that's a lot of generators. We'll grab our emitter and put it in the emitters box. And then all we have to do is drag the sphere under the XP generator so it becomes a child. And there you go, bit big. Let's grab our sphere and shrink that radius down a bit. One centimeter should do us for now. Let's zoom in here and play that back again. That's looking much better. One thing you'll notice though, if we come up here and hit render, the spheres appear, but the trails don't. To make them visible, all we have to do is come down to the materials palette here and we'll click create shader and we'll grab a hair material. Let's drag that onto our XP trail and hit render again. And there you go. Each one of our trails is now a strand of hair. That's good because it means we have control over the color, the shape, all sorts of things. All we have to do is double click on our hair material and under color, we can change these sliders to whatever we want. We're gonna go with kind of a blue tone here. And we'll change this one. This will be the tip of the hair. Make that a lighter blue. Then if we wanna get rid of that nasty green on those spheres, we can come down here and double click. That'll make another Lambert shader. We'll drag that onto our sphere. Let's go in there. And we'll give that a blue tone as well. Okay, with a bit of tweaking, you could probably get that looking pretty snazzy with the standard renderer. But for this one, I'm going to be rendering the final output in Octane Render. So let's go and grab all these tags and delete them. And we'll fire up the Octane Live Viewer. We want a black background, so let's bring in a texture environment. And we'll click into here and set that to black. And we'll also add a Octane Area Light. Let's turn on the preview. And we want our light to be coming from below. So let's rotate that over. Looks like we need some materials. If you right click up here and click create material, we'll grab a glossy material. And same deal as before, we'll drag that onto the sphere. Looks like this isn't refreshing. Let's press the preview button again. That's better. Again, our trails aren't visible in the render. So basically we have to do something pretty similar. 
Instead of adding a Cinema 4D hair material, we'll come up to our XP trail and we'll add a Octane object tag. We'll click on the hair tab and set that to render as hair. And this time we can control the root and tip thickness right here. Let's set that to 0.4. I think our light is probably a tad too bright right now. So let's go up here and bring the power down to 10. Cool. Let's line the shot up a little bit. And I think those spheres are probably a little bit too big. Let's bring it down to 0.4. Okay, let's add a bit of color. We'll come down here and grab our glossy material. Let's change our color to a blue again. And we need to apply this to our XP trail as well. So they both have the same material. And now we only need to add some glow and a bit of depth of field. So we'll bring in a Octane camera and make sure that's activated. We'll click on the tag here. And if we go to the post processing tab, we can play with some of the post effects directly in the render. Let's turn that on. And if we crank up the bloom, we get a nice little bit of glow and we'll add a bit of glare. And if we come up to camera imager and turn that on, we can try a few different settings in the response here. It's a nice easy way to get some different looks. That one looks all right to me. And you can play around with the look as much as you like. But to really give this a cinematic look, we want to come up to thin lens, turn off the autofocus. We'll set the aperture to five, which puts everything out of focus. And we'll grab our little focal picker here and click on one of these trails. That's looking a bit cooler. We might want to just uh, change the shade of our blue here, make it a little bit brighter. Let's change our angle a little bit. And we might want to make our spheres a little bit bigger. Let's try 0.8. And maybe we'll try clicking somewhere else and we'll change the focus. Oh, that looks cool. Let's try over here. You could have a whole lot of fun with this. And if you want that glow to be stronger, we could just come up to our octane light and crank that up a bit. That's looking pretty cool. Then all you'd need to do is animate a camera to follow these along and you're in business. And you can always change the motion of your trails by coming into the X particles turbulence modifier and you can play around with the scale and the frequency. And get something like that. And that's pretty much the gist of it. Nice easy one today, I've got some bigger tutorials coming very soon. As always, if you want to download the project file, there's a link below to save you a bit of time. And you can also get a whole bunch of extra stuff at our brand new Patreon page. There's a link down below. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.